Uh, hey everyone, this is the Math 1 Unit 2 Review Packet Answer Key. Thank you, Miss Collins, for writing this up. I'm going to narrate some ideas here so I can explain things, and uh, you can speed me up or pause me if you want to re-listen to any of this. Um, first question is about hot air balloon in flight. The table below shows the height of the balloon in meters. It's always good to know the units over a period of time. So your time is often the X value because we're looking at something changing over time, going up or down. So that's sort of a tip off there. Not always, but often. The height in meters is given in the simple numbers. The question is, is there a constant rate of change? Yes, there is. If you do little caret numbers, it's going up by one. Every time you have the same change in your Y's or your X's, you should have a constant change here as well. Two and two and two. So when they're always the same number for um, every interval, you are in a linear relationship. However, if it goes from six to 10 and it skips, okay, then you'd have to compare that to a similar uh, rate of change for two other pairs, okay? You're always gonna get the same fraction. In this case, if you pick any two points, we could pick um, six and 10 and eight and 10 and do the math, but here we've just chosen six and five and two and zero, we're gonna get one half meter per second. That means for every one second we go up half a meter or for every two seconds we go up one full meter. You could say for every four seconds we go up two meters, the ratio is the important thing. Here it's simplified to one half. What does the five meters represent mathematically? That's just the y-intercept, because when x is zero we intercept the y-axis. There we go, x equals zero. But what does it mean in terms of this problem? It means that when you start your stopwatch and do this measurement, the height of the balloon is five meters. Okay, similar but different. Here we have Miss Collins is driving home. The um, thing she has control over is how many hours she drives. As she drives, she's dropping the um, gas tank level from 16 down to six gallons. Um, is this a constant rate of change again? Pick any two points and work out that slope, and as long as you are careful in your math, you'll get the same exact ratio. It's a constant rate of change. Here's one example of finding that. It turns out you're dropping two gallons for every one hour. So that's in the context of this problem, that every hour Ms. Collins drives, she loses two gallons in her gas tank. Mathematically, again, that's the y-intercept. At the start of the drive, the gas tank had 16 gallons of gas. What does the 10 gallons represent in the context of this problem? If you go to the 10 gallons, that just means that after three hours, the gas tank level was 10, okay? So now for the next one, this is all about finding equations of lines and finding the slope for those to put into slope intercept form. You can assume that if the squares are not labeled by scale, that each square is one unit. Slope is all about the change, relative change, so it looks like you're going over one unit, down one unit, or over four and down four, over five, down five, so the slope is negative one if you do that math. The equation of the line then is where is that intercept? That's the minus two, so you write y equals, y equals minus x minus two. We usually leave off the one there, but it's safe to include it, but you don't need to write it as a fraction or anything like that. Here it's a positive slope of one, and the intercept here is positive one, so you get y equals x plus one. Any vertical line will have an undefined slope because if you look and do the difference between points, you're gonna have division by zero in the denominator. So this would be uh, three minus three if we did the subtraction, and it would be then um, a rise of like one, it would be, um, uh, one minus zero or something like that. Um, but undefined slope for vertical lines, the thing you want to remember is that it's intercepting the x-axis. That's the x-axis at x equals three. So that's simply the equation for the line. It's going to be y anything. We don't even know or care. It's just any, any, x, any y's as long as x equals three. Same idea here, y equals negative three. It's just down there on the y-axis it sometimes is misleading because it seems like, oh, this is my x-axis and this is parallel to that, but we do not write x equals. Horizontal lines are always y equal because if you think about it, y equals zero x plus b, and that just drops out and you y equal 
just your y-intercept of negative 3. Okay, so same thing here. Just look at the slope. The slope is up 1 over 2. That's where the 1 half comes from. It intercepts there at negative 3.5 or 7 over 2. Here you want to just be careful to use the points that are given. If you look at these two points, don't go to like this point here. You'll be inaccurate. Use the points given, very important. And it goes over 5 and down 7. So the slope is negative 7 fifths. When you plug those in into y equals mx plus b, you can get the exact answer. And in this case, if I plug in, say, this point here, that's the point over positive 2, down 4. So I plug in negative 4 for the y value equals, what's the slope again? Oh, yeah, negative 7 fifths. What's my x value? Oh, that's 2. And then plus b. And when I solve this, I'm going to get negative 4 equals uh, negative 14 fifths plus b. If I add 14 fifths to both sides, that's actually 2.8. And when I add 2.8 to both sides, I will get 1.2. So actually, strictly speaking, this is minus 1.2. But um, for the test purposes, a close estimate will be fine in such a problem like that. Um, if uh, the slope is 0, and you're going along the x-axis, that's just the equation y equals 0. So sometimes these really easy ones can be tricky because they're so easy they're hard. But just think through, what is this? x can be anything as long as my points are along that axis. It's y equals 0. Here's another one, x equals negative 4 because that's where we are at negative 4. All right, um, next up is Fill in the chart below in standard form. Write an equation of the line that goes through the given points in all three forms. Um, so standard form is always ax plus by equals c. Slope intercept form, you've been over that. Point slope form is similar but slightly different. Here we've got the slope of the line and then we have each point with a variable and then you're subtracting the corresponding value from your given point. So those are going to be real numbers. M is going to be a real number. X and Y are the variables. So we'll see how that works right here. Write an equation of the line that goes through these given points in all three forms. So guess what? Start by finding the slope. Once you've got the slope, you've also got a point. So the easiest of these three is just to plug in the point. Ms. Collins chose 11 and neg uh, one, negative 1 comma 11. But suppose you'd chosen 17 for the Y value and 3 for the X value then it would just be y minus 17 equals, what's the slope again? 3 over 2 and x minus 3. These are the same line, but slightly different equations. So that's one special feature. Slope intercept form, well, there's only one right way to do it. If I were to multiply this in to each of these and then add 17 to both sides, I would get this, ex same, this exact same equation. Thank you, Ms. Collins, for doing that work for me. Standard form, take slope intercept form, and just you want to get rid of the fractions. I want to get rid of that 2 that I'm dividing by. So I multiply everything by 2. And once I do that, I will get rid of the fractions. And I get 2y minus 3x equals 25 after I brought the x over. You can bring the x over and then get rid of the fractions, or you can get rid of the fractions and then bring the x over, whichever your choice. Here is a point slope form for this one now. Again, finding the slope at negative 2, plugging in my point. Again, I could have plugged in these points if I'd wanted, those coordinates if I'd wanted. Um, but this one is fine. And then when you convert it into slope-intercept form, you just distribute the negative in. There it is, negative 2x plus 12. And then you move the 9 over. Adding 9 to both sides gets me to 21. There is slope-intercept form. Standard form is easy because it's already out of any fractions. So that's just a move the x over and write it. Usually we'll write it as 2x plus y equals 21. But that's either one is fine. It's often the standard way is the x goes first. Um, point slope form is again found um, in this one by just finding the slope carefully. It's kind of an ugly fraction, but then plugging in the point and carefully putting minus a minus 14 is plus 14.
there's the slope again. You can bring the minus sign way out front. It doesn't have to go up above or down below. And then we're subtracting two. Again, just get good at this math. It can be tedious. There won't be a million of these on the test, but this is a chance to practice and make it muscle memory. Bring in that fraction carefully. And then once you've got that fraction, you're gonna take away 14 from both sides. Do you know your calculators are good at this? Let me show you right now. Okay, if I turn this on and I quit out of that, clear the screen. So let's say I wanna do 25 over seven minus 14, and I wanna write it as a fraction. I'll just do 25 divided by seven, hit enter first, then do minus 14, hit enter, and now, I've got a decimal, just hit the math button, into fraction, hit enter, and enter one more time, and there it is, negative 73 over seven. So you can use your calculator on the test, it can help you with those fractions, good to know. Standard form then is all about clearing fractions, what's the lowest um, common, uh, least common multiple there, it's gonna be 14 is a multiple of seven, so I can multiply everything by 14, and I'll get rid of those fractions. So y times 14, 25 times 14 cancels the 14, and then 73 times 14, the seven cancels with the 14, and I get two times 73. Again, your calculator can help you. You can take this, and I can multiply by 14 times 14, and I'll get that answer 146, negative 146, all right? And then this last one, is undefined, so I can't use slope-intercept form, I can't use point-slope form, all I've got is x minus 3. All right, that ends the first half.